Hey everyone, and thank you for joining in to the Red Ribbon Retrospect. I'm your host, uh, Romanova, uh, Android 18 right now. And, Romanova. <laughs> and we have uh, on the side here, Tasty Steve. Uh, everyone give him a warm welcome from <laughs> hey, your computers. <laughs> everyone on Twitch. Um, Hello, for... internet. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I'd like to uh, thank everyone for joining us. Um, I want to shout out to Ash and Champion for the main layout. And there's a layout you'll see later for another segment called the Bulma Brief. That uh, shout outs to Echo for designing that. Shout outs to Dr. Giro for uh, creating, you know, the androids. Uh, and <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's get it rolling. So uh, Steve, uh, so you've been tweeting a lot about Dragon Ball Fighters, and you're yeah, one of yeah. our well, very... Well, first off, we... Oh, go ahead. We, we, we need to address the, the fact that you just said shout-outs to a maniacal killer who made a machine <laughs> to kill people. I'm just saying, I just I don't feel like you just... You kind of glazed over it at the beginning, and I'm like, oh, man, you can't do that. That's not even... Yeah, shout-outs to Charles Manson. Uh, but yeah, let's get started. <laughs> I, I just thought it'd be funny. It's, I don't actually like Dr. Dro, right. you know. Um, I think people really... Un to sell the red ribbon. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, like, I'm a Dragon Ball guy, and like, the amount of red ribbon army that I'm like actually about is kind of crazy. It's pretty cool, but go on. Okay. I'm sorry. No, I, I'm, I'm excited. Oh, yeah, no, I'm excited too. Um, this is actually way more like I was like nervous, but now I'm not nervous at all. This is like just a conversation, it's fun. Um, so you're one of the most like I think like notable commentators that we have in the FGC. So it's like really good to have you also be interested in Dragon Ball since that's getting, you know, very big. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, just tell us about like when you got into Dragon Ball, like what made you so hype? Like, like how was how did you feel when you found out about Dragon Ball Fighters? You know, so so I've been in the Dragon Ball since I've been watching Dragon Ball since, man, it used to come on at like 2 a.m. when I was like 12 years old and I used to stay up just to watch it. Uh. I was watching Z all the way up through high school. I, I actually made a book uh, about Dragon Ball where I drew the covers and the enders. I'm I'm legit yelling at my mom to find, find it. And uh, I some of the, my main art projects that I did, like my own personal pro projects, which is Dragon Ball stuff. I made a book to follow everything that happened in the show. And I found uh, articles from GeoCity citing the power level, oh uh, the power God. levels of all the characters doing the storylines, <laughs> uh, Akira Toriyama's uh, thought process on who's stronger and why they are, and the potential of, like Gohan mixed with Saiyan and all this other stuff. Oh like I'm pretty knee deep in the Dragon Ball, I'm, as well as like I'm one of those people, those stupid people that begged my granddad for 200 bucks back in '98 by Dragon Ball GT Final Bout. And if you know anything about Dragon Ball, you know Dragon Ball GT Final Bout on PlayStation was one of the most sought out Dragon Ball games because it was hella rare, but it was definitely not worth two hundred dollars. So I'm just gonna see I'm gonna be honest about it. <laughs> so Okay. Well yeah, I mean I, I feel you there. Like I, I myself like went back like not too long ago and like pulled out of a trunk like a bunch of the Beckett uh Dragon Ball collector uh magazines that used to exist like back in the day. Oh wow. <laughs> so that was like a big throwback. So that's awesome that you've been a fan for forever. So um now the announcements, like you know, they kept coming out like Arc Systems, they kept having uh the uh, announcements like one after another like what character would you say that you were most excited for oh you mean doing that that's been added to fighters correct yeah like through the announcements so through the announcements so far oh man well first off they just announced like brawly and every is excited for brawly um i think it's really sick that they decided to uh actually go ahead with adding Brawly, considering, like, I don't know how, if any many people have many talked about, how many people have actually talked about it, but Dragon Ball Fighters kind of exists in this, like, dimension of, like, Dragon Ball Super, but they can, and they haven't mentioned Brawly yet in Super, because he, I guess he's not a real character, because he's only existed in the movies, so it's like, for them to add, like, uh, that character, and then, then like, Bardock on top of that, like I think that's sick too because they and I think all all I think any character they add is sick because Arxis does this thing where they now um uh put these intros back into the game and people know me know that I love Guilty Gear and they have these personal intros with each character that as they know through the series and they have like special kill intro like 
outros and stuff. So that alone makes it like super hype for me. But I, I'm interested to see the other DLC characters as well. I mean, like I'm one of those guys that's like I would be happy with almost any character. There's no character I really want over anybody. But the fact that they decide to put them in is like a nice little, like a caveat. Like I'm like, yo, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I um I agree on the Brawley announcement. The uh I know you know Decay obviously he's like insanely like excited because he hasn't picked up the game, but I think Brawley might inspire him to. So uh, uh, uh you know, and uh, everyone yeah. on Twitter, <laughs> of is... course, that's the character he plays, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, but. You know, that's awesome that you've always, like, and I didn't even think about that, too. Like, he's really only appeared in the movies. Like, if you think yeah. back, like, you, you really don't see him in anything else. So, it's kind of cool to see him be brought to life in that universe. Um, well, a lot of people, so, uh, um, the the fact that Brawley and then, like, Khalifa, um, those characters exist. Like, everybody was thinking that Brawley Brawley wouldn't exist and it would only be like Khalifa. So it's like it's it's weird that they say they wanted him in the game that they put him in, but I'm that's that's what's crazy to me because then we could possibly have both and then that would be even more crazy. Like that would be sick. Um so just moving on just cuz like I feel like we could talk forever about like just characters and whatnot. Um yeah, that's true. the one last thing about characters before moving on to just talking about the scene real quick is uh if there's another character that you could have in the game that has not been announced yet, what oh, character would you like okay. to see? <laughs> oh man. Okay. All right. I would be hype for like I said I'd be hype for any any character because of the fact that it's just Dragon Ball on their end. But I know that we talked about, like, the movie people that did and didn't exist. But now, like, I was going to say, like, Gozita, right? But I scratched all of that once they unveiled um, Ultra Instinct, like, perfect form Goku. Like, who does not want that character in the game? Like, I don't think it's been a, a more unanimous character want in a game than, like, anything. So it's like, people are really hype for Brawly now. And I think the next big goal, the next big goal... Is to add that boy Ultra Instinct Goku, which would suck because that would bring us up to four Gokus. Yeah, but I really don't care. <laughs> we have like we have like 500 Gokus right now. We're becoming like the Mortal Kombat ninjas. There's like a different shade of each one. <laughs> see, you understand this. That means we're already see we. The more Goku, better. They're the ninjas. Dang, shout out to Ultra David. I'm glad you said that. That is a very good point. Because Ultra David is one of those guys, he's like, oh, this Goku 8597 universe, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, David, there's more than one Goku that exists. What if you want to play with the different powered up levels? And if you're an NRS player, and I already know this because, every, look, I don't know if you got, oh, man, this is so crazy. And you're right, we can keep talking about this. Definitely Goku, the ninja of so many of them, you know? I completely agree. <laughs> Yep. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I get way too. No, hyped. no, no. I'm like, I'm, I'm hyped too. I'm just like, I know, like, too, like, you have a time constraint, so I'm just trying to like, still oh, have yeah, fun and stuff, and like, you know, keep it Look, rolling. Look, we run a little over. It's okay. It's all right. We're okay. As long as we're having cool. fun, I guarantee you, you know, I'm, you know, a bit early. You know, it's all right. Okay. Okay. I'll hold you to it. So right now at Winter Brawl, as we speak, we have. Our top eight, which is uh, New York Chris G versus Theo and Winners. So we got them. We have Excalibur Blades, Fame 96 as the other people in Winners. And we have yes. in Losers, Sonic Fox versus Necro Un Undine. And yeah. Nakiel versus uh, D Kill Sage. So. Oh, wow. That's another sick. Okay. So going from bottom top, Nakiel versus Kill Sage. That, that's actually going to be really good because. Um, Sonic Fox already is in Losers, and the Kill Sage actually is one of Sonic Fox's main training partners. Nakio being like one of the soul, the he's one of like I guess he's one of the innovators of Dragon Ball Fighters at this point because he's been playing, he's been releasing a lot of content, and he's been at a lot of events, even like winning like his locals and stuff. So that's gonna be a ridiculous match of one. Um, um I don't know. After that, it was uh, Sonic Fox 
versus uh, uh, Necro Un Undine Undine oh, Necro yeah, Undine. Yeah. I've never heard of their name, but I figure if there's people whose name I might not have heard of, they could be from like like this is my first anime game because like I love anime, but I have not played myself any like Let's Blaze go. Blue or Guilty Gear. And, like, this is, like, what's, you know, getting me into the system. So I think that's also, like, a great thing about this game. It's bringing people in that maybe would have never picked up an anime game before unless somebody, like, you know, unless True. they had the chance to, like, but you're actively pursuing this. And, you know, so I would assume maybe it's, like, somebody, especially if they made Top 8, that has been around either playing anime fighters or, you know, from one of the other communities. Yeah, um, like I said, he's uh, one of Sonic Fox's main training partners. And he plays uh, at he plays at Next Level Battle Circuit. I'm pretty sure he plays Marvel as well, and I'm pretty sure he also dabbles in uh, like the NRS games as well. So he he knows the ins and outs as well as like I said, he competes at Next Level um, pretty consistently as well. So he's up to par. He's up to par too. Um, but they they all like that's like East Coast players. So like um, Nakio is the only foreigner on that first match. The second match, these guys actually play each other a little bit. They play each other a little bit. And I think uh, Sonic Fox is actually going to take it pretty clean. Um, after that is Chris G. We got Chris G uh, and Theo. We have another one that's Excalibur Blades and Fame 96. Oh, I, okay. I have not heard of either of those two, but somebody wow. in the stream, I believe, said something about uh, 96, I think. I thought somebody did. Excalibur Blades is a... Uh, uh, He's one of those players as well. He's been he's been around for a while, and I believe he plays Guilty Gear. I could be wrong, um, but if he plays Guilty Gear, I feel like a lot of those players, a lot of the Guilty Gear players, myself included, um, making a transition from even even Guilty Gear or Blaze Blue to Dragon Ball Fighters is really not that strange. I mean, there are little different movement inconsistencies, but like it's it's really easy for that transition. So it's a really good, like you said, it's a lot of players first like. And anime game but um i'm not sure about the other guy i don't think i've ever actually heard of the other guy that he's playing that that's now that's a new name to me it said it's excalibur blades and who was fame 96 yeah i've never yeah, heard of fame 96 that sounds like a blaze blue player's name though yeah, I I'd like I definitely like it's like it's all like new like learning these like and I'm sure for you guys as commentators like you you probably see from like other games that you haven't like necessarily like, commentated and stuff like you'll see these people coming in and you'll like have their own storylines in the FGC now like for but for a different game you know like and maybe they'll flourish right. even more in this game than they did in the previous one that they were playing so you know. It's it's tough to say. <laughs> it's okay. It it worked either way. It's like it's like the Skype window that's like in here because oh, like snap. I didn't have time oh, to. Okay, I'll do this. Yeah. No, either way, this. whatever's easier. How to hold your phone. Cool. Um, you know, everyone's okay. everyone's loving you right now on the stream, anyways. So um, <laughs> oh, Fame ninety six is a Blaze Blue character. He got second at CF and uh, at Frosty Faustings. Oh, um, I should have met that guy because I was at Frosty Faustings. Yeah, he plays. The blues and sell. So. Mm, okay. Oh, he's uh, a sell player, huh? He's one of those guys. Right. <laughs> um, That's a problem. <laughs> I like, it's so funny, like, uh, just playing against sell, like, at first, like, y there's certain stuff that you can catch on to eventually, but, like, yeah, I was, like, getting caught by the uh, grab, even though it's, like, a high or whatever, like, the first time I was playing him, I was like, why can't I get oh, out of this? I'm like, oh, because I could just <laughs> crouch out of it. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing to me that's crazy, too, is, like, a storyline is, like, Chris G knocked Sonic into losers, and we have Theo. And it was a clean 2-0. And it was a clean 2-0. And everybody, and Sonic Fox was feeling itself, too. Man, like, it, that's what's so good about it, because Sonic Fox was sure, he was like, oh, this is free. And he literally said on the last NLBC, he said, and I quote, I just can't wait for Winter Brawl so I can beat up on West Coast. And Chris G smoked him clean with a 2-0. Ah, this is actually shaping up to be pretty good. I've been telling a lot of people this, but I definitely feel like, like Dragon Ball there's, too, there's so much crossover. There's built-in, like, competition. I feel like it's free. Oh, yeah. I, I think we're going to see, like, some of this whole year unfolding. We're going to see some of the best, like, like FGC story arcs that we have, like, seen. Like, this is good for the community. Like, we need, like, the rivalries. We need, like, these, you know, stories of people rising up, like, to keep coming in. And this game's going to, I think, do that for, you know, the scene. Um, oh, yeah. 
That's that's definitely true. I thought it was crazy too seeing Theo, uh, who is a notable NRS player, like make it into winners top eight. Like I'm really proud of him uh, coming from that scene and seeing him. Uh, you know, go there. I think, like, I, I was watching him play matches earlier versus KDZ where he's using uh, TN, uh, Adult Gohan, and yeah. um, Android Sale. 16, you know, oh, of course. <laughs> Everyone got an Android 16 right now, right? Um, but I did notice Dude, that... That's, uh, Marvel. that's like Marvel versus Capcom, the character. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it, the, that character, like, I was, like, messing around in the lab with him. He's pretty crazy, but, I mean, Theo was doing work, especially with Tien. Like, I think he really enjoys, and you can see, too, like, th this game, like, if you're a fan, like, you enjoy playing it even more because of, like, these characters. Right? <laughs> it's so true. Um, but, yeah, so we'll get into the last bit here. Um, it's... I wanted to give you a chance, though, if there's anything that you'd like to say before we go into, like, the quiz and, like, fun things. Like, I mean, this is all fun, but, like, you know, the little games and everything. Um, you know, if there's any other final words that you had, and while you're saying that, if there's, like, a question or two um, that somebody in Twitch might have, I, you know, and it relates to this, I might as well ask that. But just your final okay. thoughts about, you know, the scene right now and what you're looking forward to in the next couple months with the game. So, well, first off, I just want to say your podcast is actually really, really cool. I hope you guys are really enjoying this. I really hope you continue to do it because I'm a fan. That way I can look into it. You know what Thank I mean? You. Come back. Um, make sure you guys support Ms. Roman. I mean, I'm just saying, me personally, um, you know that, like, I know you're an NRS person, but, yo, I, I, welcome an, I welcome all new players. So anime is the way now. Everybody loves Dragon Ball. Anime, but I'm just happy that you did this and like you, you're making your own content provided around Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Fighters as a whole. So I think that's really cool of you. But before anything, but that's what all I wanted to say. And uh, I'm really happy about what's happening with Dragon Ball in the scene um, because of the, the the overlap. There's Smash Brothers playing. If Boyd was just at Wednesday Night Fights playing uh, Dragon Ball Fighters. Um, then you have Sonic Fox going in on Sonic uh, on Dragon Ball Fighters. You have players like Leffen going in on Dragon Ball Fighters. Like D1 is interested in Dragon Ball Fighters. The fact that this new game is br bridging these gaps between all the communities. And I want to go on record and say I definitely said first that this game would be that game because people did not believe me when I was like, "Yo, <laughs> they didn't." I was like, what? "I was like, dude, Dragon Ball oh. Fighters." They did not believe me, dude. But everyone loves like I, I mean, like, not everyone, but like. Everyone that was, like, somewhat of a teenager or a kid during the 90s, right? you like Dragon Ball. Like, if you were watching TV at some point, you like Dragon Ball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and even if you don't, and this is what I tell everybody, even if you don't like Dragon Ball, you like Dragon Ball. It's not even possible. I feel like people are like, man, I don't like Dragon Ball. I'm like, I don't believe you, but okay. Like, fine, you don't like Dragon Ball, but I bet you you know about Dragon Ball. Like, I think... That it goes to show that how powerful the stop is to bring all these people and these different players together and everybody to have different stakes when playing the game. Like that's beautiful. Like I think that's really dope. Well, and and it's just it's just it, the game's just so fun. Like you know, like I'm doing the podcast, but like I'm still gonna try. Like I just started labbing again. I'm still gonna try and compete too. I hope I see even you. Like I hope I see you guys competing too if you can. Like I don't know. Like I I, I I'm I'm registered already for Combo Breaker, so I gotta get my <laughs> myself in the lab. I don't. <laughs> well, I can tell you right now, I definitely made. I think it was like top. Was it? first Wednesday Night Fights, uh, Dragon Ball Fighter stream. I didn't do as well on the second one, but, like, that's one of my things about uh, playing Dragon Ball is that I'm always going to come back. I'm going to keep labbing. There's a lot of cool players, and, like, why not, you know? Like, I think that's so sick. There's too many people involved in Dragon Ball for it not to be really good right now. The competition is good. The scene is good for it. Like, I'm in love, you know? I think this is ridiculous. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that we are anyone playing the game right now is in love with it. Like I even the yeah. even through the salt. Like we're right. able to get we're able to get through the salt. So, um uh, I will I will take us to the last bit just uh 
don't don't feel too intimidated by the questions. I focus them. Th I I'm gonna theme them every week for people around different okay. sagas. Um, I almost themed yours around the Trunks saga because I know you're a Trunks fan, but uh, I ended up okay. theming these. I wanted to go back to Namek. Um, you know, I wish okay. I had a cue okay. right now saying like we're going to Namek, like the you know the <laughs> I, the title for the episode. <laughs> 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 Exactly, and go right in, yeah. Um, so, the theme behind this game is it's uh, Shenron's Gift. The name is subject to change, but that's, like, the title now because there's seven Dragon Balls, there's seven questions, to so keep it short and simple. Okay. But just, you know, see what kind of uh, Dragon Ball geek you are. It doesn't make you less of a Dragon Ball geek if you get them wrong. They're, not too many of them are hard. Some of them you might know because of the moves in the game. So, we'll see. Uh, but are you ready? Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be as ready as I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> okay. ready, but let's go. Let's run it. Okay. In the Namek Saga, what minion of Frieza's had a second form that they thought was absolutely ugly and repulsive? Um, do, was it uh, uh, Dobura? You're thinking Dodoria, I believe, um, and he's... The, the he's yes. the, he it's not Dodoria, but it's somebody that was associated with Dodoria at that same time. Zarba? Wait, is it Zarba? Yes, you got it right. Ding, ding, ding. I I need to get Zarba? ding sound all effects. Right. All right, all right. <laughs> okay. All right, that's one. All right, all, right. all right. What Namekian does Piccolo first fuse with in an attempt to fight Frieza on planet Namek? Um. What's his name? Damn it. Kami. He, did he... <laughs> that is somebody he fused with, but he fused or with Kami, Kami a second. No. I know. Like, some of these are tricky. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm... I'm. No, no. It's cool. Let me let me think about this. He fused... Oh, it was when he started freaking... He started freaking out. He was like, oh, yes, yes. I can do it. I think that's what you're talking about. That's what that gift is from. Wait, can you, say, can you answer that question? I will is answer that, it. Na real? It's Nail. You... The, the person he fused oh, with was Nail. Okay. Okay, all right. Nail. God damn it. I knew, I swear to God, I okay. knew that. I, I will, swear I knew that. I will claim to you, because he's not my favorite member of the Ginyu Force, that this next one, I might myself get wrong um, being asked oh, it, but wow. you knowing the game, you might be able to get uh, this right. What is the special move that Rikum oh. use it, uh, that he used that could have killed Vegeta if it had not been interrupted? Is it Rikum Kaboom? I think that's what he oh, said. I'll, I'll give that one to you because I think that's what he says when he does it. But it's called yeah, like, it, oh. it, in the game. It's called Eraser Gun. So uh, what? I don't. Okay. I don't actually. Uh, I wonder okay. if they title it after the actual move names in the. Most of them in the game are. Um, okay. Uh, whose death triggers Goku's first transformation into Super Saiyan? Oh, that's free. That's Krillin. <laughs> That's definitely Krillin. <laughs> okay. Krillin was the, t the cat. See, you're feeling better oh, now. You're feeling better. Sad, sad. You're yeah, feeling better sad. now. Okay, number five. What creature does Captain Ginyu accidentally swap bodies with? A frog. <laughs> A frog. I remember that. That was hilarious. All right, we got that one. Okay, number six. Where does the Ginyu force right, appear after they die? Where's their first appearance after oh, they die? Oh, uh, it was a... Hell, hell, hell. It was, uh, is that it? I can't remember, actually. What would you say? I think that was it. Because I remember seeing them doing dumb poses. Uh, hell, but it's like E-L-L -L or something like that instead. It was right before hell. You're, you're close. There was somewhere they, they went where people sent them to hell. Was it the... Oh, oh was it Snake Way, is it Snake Way Road? No? I'll, I'll give it... I-L, is it? I'll give it to you. It was, it was King Kai's Planet. They were, King Kai had oh, them, because okay. right, right. Yamcha, Tien, they all beat them up, and they they then get sent to hell from there, so. Oh, oh my god, <laughs> I can't believe I didn't remember that. Oh my god, alright, oh, somewhere in there. Alright, okay, I'll take that, I'll hold that. These are good questions, by the way, I want you to know. Okay, cool. These, these are I'm like, I'm sorry if, if, you're, if, it, if it means anything to you. Uh, there, there were certain, uh, people that I don't think would do half as well right now if I had had them on this podcast. So <laughs> you're 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 killing it right now. Um, all right, all right. Final question: 
for the seventh Dragon Ball. Okay. What ultimate attack does Frieza use to make the Namekian core unstable? Oh, oh man. man. Uh, actually, Death Ball? Is that it? Yes. Death Ball? Yes. Wait, it is. It, it is. Yeah, right, it's right, Death Ball. Right, yeah. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> Alright, let's so go. You'd let's get, go. So you you would have only you would have you wouldn't have gotten every single Dragon Ball, but you got some of them. So you're that much closer to yeah. getting your wish granted, right? <laughs> Alright, okay. I'll come back for another episode. They like they like those last two Dragon Balls, those last few Dragon Balls. Alright. And then um the last little bit that we're gonna do is it's an impersonation okay. bit. And oh, it's good. gonna <laughs> it's where I'm gonna just tell you something that you have to quote and you have to do your best and feel free to get dramatic, you know. Okay, um, okay. Feel free to get dramatic. Uh, All right. I want you to give me your best Kamehameha. Oh, wow. <laughs> really? I, gotta, I would have to put the phone down for this. If you can set it oh, up, a, you know, if you have to use your hands, you can. You could use one hand. It's up to you. This is oh, all man, you. You want me to, you want me to go, hon? I mean, oh, this is me... all you. This is all you. All this right, is so, your, 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 so your game. So let's just say... My phone arm is the dead arm, you know, so it's like, ka me ha me ha <laughs> 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 You gotta do the follow. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, how it you gotta have the you like gotta that. have the Goku appear behind you in spirit. <laughs> right. <too. laughs> See if if I had more <laughs> If I had more props, you know what I'm saying, the green screen behind me, I think I'm going to have to... You know what? You just gave me a crazy idea. I'm going to record my Kamehameha just for, you know, intensive purposes, you know? Yeah, you should start that's... it. All the commentators should have to record a Kamehameha. You, oh, snap. Oh, yeah. wow. I think I might have to take this to the Twitterverse. And yeah. Let them know if they start... really about this Dragon Ball life. We're going to start this. I'm going to tag you every time. I'm going to tag you, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, be like, what's your best Kamehameha? Hashtag... Red Ribbon Retrospect. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I, I feel like we just started a fad. Tell everybody about it. <laughs> Somebody said that they fell out of their seat because of that. I was just about to say, I'm sorry for those affected <laughs> by, by a command. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this didn't happen in the Dragon Ball universe, but I'm a nicer person than that. So I'm sorry for those who might have been destroyed in that Kamehameha wave. I apologize. <laughs> Well, I sincerely appreciate you coming by, Steve. I know it was a no tough problem. time to fit in your schedule. You're a busy man, but you know we, you know everyone watching. I'm sure they they loved you, and you know this is a great first like episode, and you've helped make this great. So I appreciate it sincerely. Well, first off, you having me. I really hope I get a chance to come back, maybe. Down the line, the, the tournament line, maybe some anniversary episode or whatever the case may be. Or I might just hit you up and see if it's going down. Who knows? But thank you for having me. Um, any kind of Dragon Ball enthusiast is always a friend of mine on top of that. We've talked on multiple occasions now, so you're officially the homie. So whatever you need, you need, want to talk, rap, hit me up. I'm pretty sure I'm going to see you at Combo Breaker anyway, so it's not Hell a big yeah. deal. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. All right. Well, but, thank uh, you. No problem. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, everyone say goodbye. We're going to end this and then go into the next segment for the Bulma Brief. All right, bye, Steve. All right, wait, wait. I'm, I'm, oh, wait, I'm, okay. I'm do my fake teleport, and that's okay. when you cut it. So it's not like I got to teleport. Okay. These guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so everyone, thank you for watching. Don't don't tune out yet. I'm going, I have one little last bit for you. It's called the Bulma Brief. So we're going to go to the Bulma brief screen uh, where I'm going to pretend to be Bulma this time. Um, so we got our Bulma brief. <laughs> and what this is, is I'm going to be uh, showing you tweets that I see Dragon Ball related and what I think about them. And, you know, most of them, they could be funny. They could be serious. They could have to do with it. So, you know, let's let's get to it. All right. Uh, so the first one is, I wanted to put this on weeks ago. This is Punk uh, saying, I'll stream some Dragon Ball Fighters later. Let's talk about how trash it is, guys. Um, I find this one great because I'm pretty sure Punk is actively playing Dragon Ball Fighters now. So I think now his opinion would be different. I don't know about you guys, but this is definitely uh, something I believe. I think that maybe he was too early to judge it, but I think it's a great one. Next, we got this guy, Eshi, uh, 
you know. Uh, it's really cool that I started following Sonic Fox for Dragon Ball Fighters, only to see every single furry porn picture he faves on my timeline. Thanks, Twitter. Well, how could you not know that you were going to see that following Sonic Fox? That is my question. I, you know, as somebody who knows Sonic, I, I completely, I embrace the furry, you know, and, and it, it is to be expected that he will have suggestive furry photos in your timeline when you become friends with the fox. That is just, that is just to be expected, sir. Third, we got, uh, GC Yoshi, got a raise, nice. I'm still garbage at Dragon Ball Fighters. Well, you know what, Yoshi, you keep, you keep pushing. You got this. You got that raise. You just got a lab. And you will get this. You trust me. You will get this, sir. And last but not least, this guy might have won Twitter with this tweet. So between Goku Blanco reveal and Bardock getting in, look forward to this closet or, uh, closest Dragon Ball fighters near you. So obviously we have, you know, the Mortal Kombat ninjas, but all the Gokus, which me and Steve like talked about on the podcast. So shout on to uh, Leon Calvo for hopefully I didn't jack up your name there uh, for creating such a wonderful tweet that <laughs> we all get to enjoy here. You know, if we didn't already see it on Twitter, you know, typically uh, these will be like tweets within the week of uh, the podcast, but. Uh, again, this is the first one because it's been a couple weeks. Uh, we had some accidents that happened, but, you know, we're here. We're here. So, everybody, that was the Bulma brief. I got to work on my Bulma voice. Clearly, it's not there yet. But, um, everyone, sincerely, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Um, I'm your host, uh, Romanova. I hope to keep bringing you even more fun Dragon Ball uh you know, content coming up with the podcast, you know, feel free um, with the uh, Twitter down there, the Red Ribbon Tweets Twitter to, you know, or my personal Twitter to tweet, like, if you have anything you'd like to see maybe asked of the next people on the podcast. I don't have, uh, I don't know if they're uh, available for next week, but next week could possibly be somebody like Beyond Toxin, um, you know, like a player, but we're definitely going to keep trying to keep it a variety, you know, not just not just the players, but like, you know, different personalities, people that just enjoy the game, you know, uh, hopefully we could get um, Voice of Vegeta. We, we were all like trying to uh, get him on Twitter, um, which tweets still exist. So if you want to annoy him, to be on here sometime i think that would be a great thing you know maybe we'll get our way um so uh is there a set day of the week it is going to be sundays i also put that down there on the bottom right is uh sundays at 8 p.m central which is my time and 9 p.m uh eastern for all you east coast people and i guess that would be 6 p.m for you west coasters um so i'll finish this off before saying completely goodbye um, I'll answer like a couple questions if you guys have them in the Twitch chat and, um, you know, just, just lay them on me here. Do, 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 do. I don't know if there's any questions or not. <laughs> if you don't have any questions, then I definitely can sign off. Um. Oh, what sparked the idea? I don't know. I, I was literally at work the one day and like when I was like, man, I want to do something like content wise for Dragon Ball. And then I went home and I thought about the idea and I was like, oh man, I love, obviously like I love Android 18. So I was like, uh, why don't I do a podcast, but make it an interactive one and be Android 18. What would I call it? And I was like, well, I got to maybe red ribbon, like, right. Cause then that'll be like a logo right off the bat. And I was like, Oh, red ribbon retrospect. So that's how that came about. And then I figured the 18 thing would be fun, even though I'd love to be dressed as trunks. He's also a favorite of mine, but you know, just conducting the interviews in a fun manner like that, you know, and having a quiz, you know, maybe throwing in some other stuff if I can think of anything fun. Um, oh, and yes, Android 18 is like one of my favorites. I would say Trunks is my favorite over her just because 
my even like I mentioned those Beckett collector magazines. I, I've posted screenshots of like me writing to the Beckett people like that I never sent in when I was like 10 years old because it says my name, my age on there, like Amanda, like 10, uh, you know, put more trunks in here. Uh, I love trunks like, you know, I was just like a silly kid, but I, I love trunks and I still love trunks. So he is def he is my favorite and Dirty Teen's second favorite. That's why they're both on my team for Dragon Ball Fighters. So, um, and I will typically always have Android 18. I also have like the other outfit, like the like white shirt with the, the biker vest kind of thing. So, you know, might switch it up, but always keep it 18 uh, because it's androids, you know, so. Um, so Khalifa and Kale, um, it's hard for me to say. I am not that far. I'm honestly not that far into super. Um, I was actually protesting against, not literally protesting, but I just, I, I was like, I wasn't sure if I would like Super because I'm such a diehard Z fan, and I thought that the animation didn't look as good at first, and I, I, I didn't think it would be the same feeling, but I started watching it, and I'm like in love, like, one of my new favorite characters is Beerus, like, from watching it, and that's also, too, like, I, you know, I love the, the English voice acting, too, because the, the voice of Beerus like I just think he fits that character so perfect and when I play him in the game because he's like the third on my team he just he just it's it's just perfect it, there's nothing else to explain except I just think it's perfect and I love Beerus so much um and then the last thing I'll answer is you're asking about the Jace cosplay um come to combo breaker we're supposed to have a full ginyu force okay uh we don't i don't have a birder yet which really makes me sad nobody wants to be birder in our group because if i'm jace i need a birder that's like peanut butter and jelly they 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 belong together jason jason birder they belong together i need i need a birder i need a birder to my jace but all right guys uh this is uh romanova signing off and uh, we'll see you next week on the Red Ribbon Retrospect. Thank you so much.